How are we doing guys? All you should be, Leeds vs QPR and this is my preview of the game. So let's get straight on with the team news. Stuart Dallas is out, Liam Cooper's out. We all already knew that, that was sort of revealed on Tuesday. But perhaps the injuries aren't quite as badly as first feared. You know, there's been a couple of reports, etc, etc, of Liam Cooper and Stuart Dallas possibly being back before January. I haven't actually had a chance to look at the press conference myself, I've only been able to look at the key points. So I will apologise for that straight away if I have got any of this team news wrong. I've not had much chance to look today. But yeah, so we've also got um, potentially Patrick Bamford's Izzy Brown available. In fact, Marcelo Bielsa has used the words they are available. Um, whether we see them or not, I don't know. Maybe we'll see them on the bench, but I'd be very surprised if we see either of them starting this game. You know, I can't see them being rushed in for this game, especially when we're on the run of um, three wins in a row. I don't think they'll be rushed in. I think Marcelo Bielsa likes to reward good performances or good individual performances, certainly. And I can't see... The change being made there, you know, it would be quite a dramatic change to make at this stage. But maybe as Christmas comes along, we're playing two or three games a week. We will see rotation. I think we will definitely see some rotation. You know, changes maybe up front, possibly Kemal Roof coming out for Patrick Bamford to come in, Izzy Brown coming in for Samu Saez, etc., etc. We will see some changes. So for me, I'm going to start with the team I go with for this game. We go with a four-one-four-one. I think we need to go back to a four at the back. QPR only really tend to play one up front, either Naki Wells or Tom Ahmed. And I don't think we need that extra covering centre-back in that situation. I think it's only really when teams play two up front where I think Marcel Bielsa likes to use the yo know, free at the back system to sort of outnumber the opposition strikers. You know, it's, a it's a real Bielsa rule, really, but I don't think we'll see that. You know, even though we've won the game against Sheffield United, I don't think, I think we will revert back to a back four. So, pay the pick-up foul. Right back, Jamie Shackleson. Uh, for me, Calvin Phillips centre-backs alongside um, Pontus Janssen, left-back Barry Douglas. Now, I think the centre-backs is maybe possibly contentious. You know, I think maybe Apple Helm is an option there. But for me, I still don't think Apple Helm's quite ready. You know, there's clearly a lot of potential there. Certainly a lot more potential than maybe a sort of credited Apple Helm for having. You know, he's done well, I think, in the two games he's played, considering the situation he's been put into. But I think, in terms of I don't want us to be playing too many young players, and I think the centre-back is one position where we don't need to throw in Apple Helm. I think we can play Calvin Phillips there because he's played well there in the three games he's played there. We've won every game. We've not conceded the goal since Calvin Phillips has moved into that centre back role. Um, and then obviously you've got Jamie Shackleton right back. It's the only real option I think at right back at the moment. Um, and probably will be the person um, Marcelo Bielsa picks at right back. Uh, holding midfield, the one um, this has to be Adam Forshaw for me. You know, I think Adam Forshaw has been playing really well. You know, I think in terms of the quality we have in the midfield, we have maybe got to move Calvin Phillips into the middle of the defence to accommodate all these midfielders. You know, and I think that Adam Forshaw slots into that holding midfield role quite well. Don't get me wrong, I prefer to see Calvin playing there, but I think Adam Forshaw does have the skill set to play there. I think he's certainly got the energy, the tenacity to go up and down and just stick on the number 10 and just stop, not let him attack the spaces or drive into spaces or leave him free. You know, he will... He, he will do his defensive work and he's, he sort of excelled at that in the yeah, Sheffield United game for me. He sort of, he got into the spirit of that game and I think that he's, some, he's really good at doing that. He has that know-how to of how to do that as well. Uh, right hand side Pablo Hernandez, left hand side Jack Clark and in midfield two, just ahead of Adam Forshaw, of Matthias Click and Samus Saiz for me. For me, Samus Saiz needs to come back in. You know, I think we have done well. You know, we've won three games in a row without Samus Saiz, but I still feel we miss that creative link. I still don't think we're creating enough clear cut chances in games. We're being very clinical, but we cannot keep relying on that. You know, we're certainly not creating as many chances as we did at the start of the season. And I don't know if that's all down to not having Samus Saiz in the team, but Samus Saiz is that different kind of player we have. That's the kind of player we will run with the ball in the middle of that pitch. He'll bring us up. 20, 30 yards, you know, he'll start, he'll turn defence to attack. He's so good at doing that, taking the ball from deep and getting us into the opposition's final third. Sometimes the final ball isn't there, but we just need that extra little bit of flair, just something to, something a little bit different to what we've got in that rest of the team. And I think him and Matthias Click work superbly well. I think at the start of the season, you have to look at that and say that was probably the highlight of, of the team. Those two working well, really well in tandem together. Uh, Jack Clark for me on the left-hand side, I think that's a no-brainer to an extent. You know, you look at Jack Harrison, you look at Ed Janowski, I cannot remember the last time both either of them put in a good performance. Certainly in that, on that left-hand side or on the right-hand side, they just haven't been playing well. Jack Clark's been showing hunger, bravery on the ball, and willing to play like a Marcelo Bielsa player, willing to run up with the ball. And he's, I think he's getting the pressing side of it as well. He's sort of knowing when and when not to press. 
he made the goal from his pressing, you know, putting pressure on the goalkeeper, and he got us the goal, and then he showed the composure to get the ball over to Pablo Hernandez. Uh, through the middle, Kemal Roof for me. You know, it has to be Kemal Roof, really. I know he hasn't scored the last couple of games, but we still get that work rate from Kemal. You know, obviously, Tyler Roberts is an option, but no. Still got to go with Kemal Roof for me in that um, lone striker role. I think he's perfected it so far this season. So just looking at QPR a little bit, they tend to set up in a bit of a 4-2-3-1 system. And I'll be honest, I'm looking at the starting eleven from the whole game. I'm just looking to the left of me now. It's a good team. You know, it's a good team. You know, I think the perception of QPR is is this should be a really winnable game and we should be winning this if we want if we've got anything about us. But it's a good team this, you know, I'm just gonna go through it, you know, it's a four two three one system. We've got a back four of two experienced centre backs in Angle Rangel and Jake Bidwell, two solid centre backs in Tony Leitzner and Joel Lynch. Then quality in the midfield as well, Massimo Luogno and Jeff Cameron, both experienced players. Massimo Luogno has been a really promising player for a couple of years now. And he's really developing into a good player as well. Um, and the attacking three is a real threat as well. Pavel Vajolek, um, Erichibo Eze and uh, Luke Freeman. Eze and Freeman are the threats of this team, the creative links of this team. They both can play in each other's positions. Eze is more of a number 10, Luke Freeman's more of a winger. But they're both comfortable sw sw swapping around. We've got to be wary of that. You know, We've got to be, have that knowledge. And I think that's what they use. They like to use that overlap. You know, um, Having Jake Whitwell push forward and using Freeman, rotating positions and finding the spaces, you know, it's moving the defence around, they're going to be really good at that, and we've got to be aware of that, you know, Calvin Phillips and Adam Forshaw have got to communicate together, you know, we need um, Jamie Shackleton to show the same sort of awareness as he has in his other right-back performances, we've got to be so wary on that side for me, that left-hand side just trying to interchange positions, and it is difficult to stop, and then you've got the option of, um, in terms of low strikers, of having Nocky Wells, um, or um, Tom Ahmed, you know, both really experienced players, both goal scoring players at this level who know where the back of the net is at this level. You know, and I think both are really good at bringing the other attacking players into play as well. They both play that lone striker role so, so well and have a lot of experience of playing that lone striker role. So for me, it's a good team. You know, we've even got some good options on the bench and we've got to really respect them. You know, I know the mid table, but if you take out the first four games of the season, they've really, really turned things around. And, Looking at them now, they I think you can only really see them moving up the table rather than down the table. But they are yeah, they are inconsistent. They do have an inconsistency about them, you know, we don't know what we're gonna get. You know, like Birmingham, like Millwall has kind of touched on. You know, we don't know necessarily what we're gonna get from this QPR team, but I certainly think it's gonna be more difficult game than what we had last season off QPR. I thought we were one of the poorest teams I saw last season. You know, I don't think they really had that much about them, but now I think they have that extra bit of creative flair, attacking flair. And they will create chances, and we've got to be wary of that. You know, we've certainly got to we've got to start the game better than we have the first sixty minutes of the last three games. You know, if we start as badly as we have have in those games, we could find ourselves one or two goals down. Absolutely no question about it. You know, Freeman's got for himself five goals. Hemed and Wells are always good for a goal. Um, Eze will find the creative spaces and the spaces to create, and we've got to be so wary of that. And for me, I think Adam Forshaw is going to be important in this game. His energy, you know, being able to track back in that lot. And he's got to be man-marking easy for me or being wary of Luke Freeman coming inside. And we've got to have that awareness. Matthias Click might have to pop out, pop into um, Adam Forshaw's position every now and again. You know, maybe I'm paying too much respect to QPR, but they have got a lot of creativity in that team. And I think they've, they've scored goals as well. They've scored plenty of goals. You know, and I just think they are a threat. You know, I don't think we can disrespect them at all. We've got injuries as well. I think if we had a full team, I'd be very confident of winning this game because they do have... I think with all that creative flair, they're not great off the ball. I will say I don't think they're the best off the ball. You know, I think they will allow us quite a lot of space. I don't think they'll press as effectively as what the last three teams we've played have done. Even West Brom as well, you can add into that. I don't think they'll press us as, as effectively. But I think they could expose the spaces we sometimes leave. You know, when we push a full back forward, they weren't, might like that. Um, so yeah, we've, got, we've definitely got to be wary of them. Definitely got to give some respect. Um, but yeah, I'd like to think it's a game we can win. I think if we want automatic promotion, it's a game we need to be winning, or at least, you know, be looking like the better team at least. You know, we can start well from the first minute, and that's what I want to see—a fast start in this game. You know, I think it's frustrating Marcelo Bielsa to an extent. You know, he's took off Ejnaroski in the last first 45 minutes twice um, at half time, two games in a row now. I'd be surprised if Ejnaroski starts with that sort of, you know, that kind of that kind of. Um, 
I suppose you could say treatment, but I, I can't see Jeshanovski starting off the back of that sort of situation that's developing. You know, I certainly think Jack Clark is good for a start now. Um, but yeah, that's my feelings on it anyway. If you've enjoyed the video, make sure you give it a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And I want to see your comments on who you think the starting, what you think the starting level should be, who you think the main threats are from QPR, and what's your prediction for the game. Make sure you check out Joe's preview of the game and Colin's preview of the game. And just to mention as well, if you want 10% off at the Terrace store, use the discount code all these TV with just with yeah I'm not going to bore you all with like the description of it but um, basically retro past sort of like Leeds memorabilia they have absolutely all of it just Google them and you'll see you know if you want ten percent off make sure you use all these TV all capital letters and I'll stop rambling and we'll see you um, on Saturday for our post match reviews and don't forget Connors Friday Night Football as well see you later.